Screen Directors Playhouse, star Alan Ladd, production Lucky Jordan, director Frank Tuttle. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has, for you, mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste, the cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is proud to present the outstanding hit, Lucky Jordan, starring Alan Ladd in his original role of Lucky Jordan. But first, let's listen in on a couple of old friends. Now here's Chesterfield's answer to Cyrano de Bergerac, Bob Hope. I'd top you easy, Dad, but we only have a minute here to sell Chesterfield. Okay, well, let's get to it. Better-tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. Mm, the mildness is a cinch to prove. You just make the Chesterfield mildness test. You know, I open a pack and enjoy that milder aroma. Then smoke them, and you'll know that Chesterfields are mild. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. So make our cigarette your cigarette. The reasons go together like this. Chesterfield, Chesterfield always takes first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. So open a pack, give them a smell, then you'll smoke them. Now, here's the first act of Lucky Jordan, starring Alan Ladd, with our host narrator, the distinguished director, Mr. King Vidor. Lucky Jordan was a hoodlum, a two-fisted gangster and a racketeer. And like all mob leaders, he lived in constant fear of his life. At the moment, framed in the shadows of a window across the street from Lucky's headquarters are two killers, an imported hood with a machine gun and Slip Moran, Lucky's trusted lieutenant, waiting to erase Lucky. Now remember, Lucky never comes out of that door first. He sends out Eddie, that's his double, and if everything's okay, he follows, and from 50 feet you can't tell him apart. Hey, get ready. Here comes Eddie, and... Is blast him. He's not so lucky anymore. Let's go. Where you going, Slip? Out of my way, pile. If you behave yourself the way I like it, you can stay in this office and be my secretary. What do you mean? Well, you'll find out just now. I think I'm going to step inside and try Lucky's chair for size. Since when don't you announce yourself, Slip? Lucky! What's the matter with you? Which? Oh, it's... Nothing, nothing. I'm ju- just a little on edge. I've been with the dentist all afternoon. Who... Who's the guy sitting here? Oh, Angelo. How do you like him for my double? I don't know. I don't know. He's a little short. He's uglier than me, but with a decent haircut and a little practice, I think he'll do. Well, what's the matter? You mad at Eddie? Mad at him? I'm giving him a swell funeral. Oh, boss, you don't mean that something happened to him? Yeah. He didn't know what hit him, but it did. Hmm. Know who did it? Yeah. Somebody who knew enough to figure Eddie would come out first. Just on a hunch this afternoon, I came out first. Good thing I did. For me. Angelo. Yeah, Mr. Jordan? You're hired. Well, what am I supposed to do? Uh, just dress like me and tag along wherever I go. Is that what this other man did? You know, Eddie? Yeah, that's right. Uh, look, I got another job setting up pins in the bowling alley. It's a nice alley. You're lucky to get out of it. Sooner or later, you're bound to get hit by a bowling ball. Mr. Higgins is here, Mr. Jordan. All right, send him in. Hey, uh, Slip, take Angelo to my tail and get him a wardrobe, will you? Yeah, okay, boss. Hi, Higgins. Hello, Slip. Hello, Lucky. Well, did you fix it? Fix? Oh, 
Well, I think it's important that you should know that... Yeah, I mean, you didn't. Well, you see, you can't go through the usual channels on a thing like this. What kind of a lawyer are you anyway? Now, Lucky, you can't go offering bribes to a draft board. You let him put me in the army. I tried everything. I even tried to get you in 4F. Yeah? What's that? Well, it's uh, socially undesirable. What do you mean, socially undesirable? Dames like me. Well, <laughs> that's not exactly the connotation. It means... Well, I'll be frank with you, Lucky. Everybody knows that you control all the rackets in town. Now, that's not considered socially desirable. Nobody's ever pinned anything on me yet. I know, I know. That's why I couldn't get you in 4F. I don't pay you to take no for an answer. Look, Lucky, I'm your attorney, and I'll do anything you want me to do. But my private opinion is that everybody owes it to his country to serve. I don't owe anything to anybody. Everything I got in this country, I got the hard way, and there was plenty of guys trying to keep me from getting it. No, no, no. There's no use getting belligerent about it, because unless a man has bona fide exemptions, he goes when he's called. Yeah? Yeah. Parents, in some cases, are grounds for exemption. What about yours? I uh, haven't got any. I mean, I never knew who they were. First thing I remember, I was in an orphan asylum labeled unadoptable. Well, then I'm afraid you're in for it, Lucky. Take another think. If I've got to have some dependence, you get me some. What? You're hard of hearing? Well, uh, you just said you don't know your parents. Sure, but there must be some old bag who's willing to call me Sonny for the right amount. Oh, no, that's fantastic. I'm not paying you to tell me I'm fantastic. You get gone and line up a mother by 10 o'clock in the morning, or I'll slap you back chasing ambulance. I never chased an ambulance in all my life. All right, if you like it better, we'll have one chasing you. Okay, Angelo, you get out first. I'll follow you. Uh, don't you think maybe if we went out together? Come on, get going. We can't keep the draft board waiting. Okay. Boss! Boss, I'm dead! I'm killed dead! Stop, you're trembling. It's only a pneumatic drill. Good morning, Lucky. I'd like to have you meet your mother. Hello, mister. Or should I call you son? You just keep your lip buttoned up. Higgins. Is this the best you could do? Well, I couldn't very well hire Whistler's mother. But this is Annie, the old dame who's always mooching quarters on Times Square. She's drunk all the time. I am not. I can't afford it all the time. Don't you know better than to be drinking at your age? I'd rather be drinking at your age. But time marches on. I know she isn't perfect, Lucky, but she'll have to do. Well, well now look, Annie. You just keep your mouth shut and don't breathe on anybody inside the draft board, and I'll give you 50 bucks when you come out. 50 bucks? Why, for that I do a swan dive off the Statue of Liberty. Okay, then we're set. No draft board is going to outsmart Lucky Jordan. Jordan, wake up! Take it easy, Sarge. And look, I uh, I want you to get one thing straight. As long as I'm bunking here, I don't want to be disturbed. And I'm not going to hang out any sign either. Get up! What do you think you're kicking, Jughead? I don't have to think, I know. Get up! Supposing I ain't done sleeping yet. Jordan, I'm making allowances for the first day. As long as you're here in Camp Missouri and I'm your top, you'll be up at 5.30 when the bugle blows. Uh... Captain, how much do you make here? Seventy-eight dollars a month. How would you like to make seven hundred and eighty? Say, do you think you can bribe the United States Army? That's what I'm trying to find out. Jordan, get up out of that bed! Okay, okay, don't strain your tonsils. What's the routine after I'm dressed? Oh, you'll just love it. We're going on fatigue duty. And I mean fatigue for you. <laughs> Say, soldier, aren't you supposed to be working instead of spending your days here in the canteen? Me? Work? Oh, no, I got an assistant named Angelo. He does my dirty work. Hey, uh, what's your name? Jill Evans. Mm, that's a nice moniker. What about uh, midnight supper in my tent tonight? You're pretty fresh. You're pretty, period. 
If you took my advice, soldier, you'd get back on your detail and save yourself a great deal of trouble. You're awfully conspicuous alone in the canteen. But I like being alone. With you. Say, uh, how about a bottle of bear cute eyes to go with this popcorn? <laughs> if you eat any more popcorn, you'll swell up like a balloon. Oh, that'd be great. Then I could sail away from this camp and nobody would know the difference. What's the matter with you? Are you homesick? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty lonesome. You see, I... I miss having my own things. Don't tell anybody, but... But I always slept with a teddy bear. Cute, aren't you? Just what detail are you assigned to? Well, it's a military secret, but I, I know I can trust you. I'm working private for the colonel. He wants me to think up some way to entertain the soldiers. Hey! Wait a minute, I got it. We build a staircase of peppermint candy, and then while the band plays Beat Me Daddy Ate to the Bar, you come down in a pair of high heels and chevrons. Then for a gag at the end, we... We dropped the chevrons off. I'm glad you thought of that. Now there's no reason for you to hang around here anymore. Oh, yes, there is. The Navy wants me to think of something for the sailors. Excuse me, dearie, but maybe you could give me a steer. I'm looking for my boy. What's his name? Lucky Jordan. He's right here in the canteen. Follow me. Haven't got a drink around here, have you, dearie? I've got some nice cold root beer. Uh, it's too cold. Uh, hello, lucky son. What are you doing here? I just came down to see you, son. What for? Well, I got sort of lonesome. You did, huh? I ought to kick you in the head right out of here. <clears throat> nice having you come down. Well, that sounds more like my boy. I guess I sort of took you by surprise. Ain't you gonna kiss me? Uh, yeah, sh sure. You're stiff. I ain't neither. I had a couple after breakfast, but I ain't had any since. Okay, okay, break it up. I hope you ain't sore at me. I mean about coming down here to see you. But it makes a mother sort of proud having a boy in the army. You're crocked to your eyeballs. What'd you come down here for? Well, since I'm... Sorry, your mother. Thought you'd like to know I'm broke. Oh, a shakedown, huh? I paid you off once. Huh. Didn't last long. I had house guests. All right, here's a hundred. Come on, blow. Well, goodbye, son. I told you to blow. Get out and don't come back. Goodbye, dearie. Goodbye, Mrs. Jordan. The idea of a man treating his mother that way. I didn't ask her to come out here. I think you're disgusting. I'm going to report you. For what? For hanging around the canteen all day, every day, and doing nothing. There's Sergeant Jones outside. Hey, wait a minute, sister. How much do you make here? Why? Whatever it is, I'll double it if you keep your mouth shut. Sergeant, there's a soldier here who's AWOL. Come in, miss. What kind of a medal do you get for being a stool in the army, cute eyes? Here's your man. Well, if it ain't the missing link, Lucky Jordan. Yeah. And who let you out of the cage? Well, nice and congenial. That's the way I like him, especially when I'm top kicking the who's gal. March, soldier, march! If you would like to know a quick, easy way to ease the pain of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, then by all means try Anison. Your own dentist or physician may at one time or another have handed you an envelope containing Anison tablets. Then you already know how incredibly fast and effectively Anison brings relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. For your own sake, try Anison. Anison is sold to you on this guarantee. If the first few tablets do not give you all the relief you want as fast as you want it, you may return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. You can get Anison tablets at any drug counter. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. 
And now the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Lucky Jordan, starring Alan Ladd as Lucky, and our host narrator, Mr. King Vidor. Lucky's sentence of 30 days in the guardhouse was never quite completed. And the reason for that, to quote Lucky, was... I'm going to sit this war out someplace where they can't find me. With a blonde in one hand and a steak in another. So he deserted. Stole an official car. Stole the official's clothes. And broke out of camp. About ten miles out, he was stuck up by a pair of thugs. But he successfully beat them off. Just as Jill... The girl from the canteen drove her car onto the scene. What goes on, Lucky? Just a stick-up. Well, what's that in your hand? A briefcase I found in the car. I use it as a weapon. You know, if you handle one of these things right, you can knock a guy's brains in. What are you doing here? I thought I recognized you when you passed me back on the highway. I followed you just to be sure. You're A-W-O-L again. Move over. I'm driving. Get out of my car. I'm sorry, sister. Mine seems to be hot. You hear what I said? Get out of here. Where are you going? Over the hill. Well, you're not taking me with you. Do you realize this is kidnapping? Well, what are you talking about? You were so crazy about me, you followed me. Look, if you want my car, take it. But let me out. Uh-uh. You're too nosy. You go around reporting people. Stop her. I'll throw this briefcase of yours out. Go ahead. It isn't mine anyhow. Very well. Here goes. We've been riding for hours Just how long do you intend to keep me with you? Till I'm in the clear Well, in case you're interested, you're almost out of gas You won't get very far, my friend And when they catch you, I hope they put you in the guardhouse for the rest of your life There's a service station I'm going to pull in and if I hear one peep out of you... Hey! It's after 12. There's nobody home. All right. We'll sleep here tonight. And get gas when they open up in the morning. Go to sleep. The moment you do, I'm leaving. Get out. What are you going to do with me? I'm going to bed you down for the night. No, thanks. I said get out. Get for the ladies' washroom. Oh, no, you don't. You can't put me in there. Now, listen, cute eyes, is that fair? How do you know you're not going to like it until you've been inside? I'll be good. I, I, I promise you I won't run away. You might walk in your sleep. I'll, I'll kick you. I'll beat you. I will not go okay, in there. Okay, then I'll kill you. Uh, put me down. Do you hear? Put me down. Sure, when we get inside the washroom oh, door. Oh, please don't. I'll sleep in the car. I'm sleeping there myself. Of course, there's not much room, but I'm willing to split it with you. Well, that's very nice of you. I prefer it here. Sleep tight, cute eyes. Tomorrow we'll be in New York. Lucky! Hello, Slip. I see you're taking things over for me. Okay. Uh, uh, run along, pile. Hello, Lucky, darling. Hmm. You lost weight. Well, I've been awfully worried about you. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed you've just had a fainting spell on the couch. Bait it. Well, it's good to see you again, boss. I <laughs> hope you don't mind my clowning around with Pearl a little. Why should I mind? No good letting a dame with red hair cool off. How come you ain't wearing your soldier pants? I left them in that camp. I figured that some guy who was going to stay in the army might need them. How hot are you? Hmm? Don't you read the papers? I'm hotter than a bullet. You know, about ten miles out of camp, a couple of guys in a big car jumped me. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know what they were after, but they seemed satisfied with a couple of right crosses. Where's the briefcase, Lucky? Huh? How do you know about that? That can come later. Where is it? Listen, Ahmed Eyes, when you ask me a question, your voice better go up in the end. Well... <laughs> All right, look, I didn't mean nothing like that, Lucky, but that briefcase, that's kind of important. Yeah. That's better. Now, tell me how you know so much. Well, I sent those guys that jumped you. Of course, they didn't know it was you, the guy whose car you stole. He was an army engineer. That briefcase he was carrying around, that's, that's full of hot dope on a new tank armor. Since when did you get interested in tanks? 
Now, look, Lucky, in our business, you got to keep yourself up to date. This bookie joints, you know, slot machines, that's old-fashioned. They weren't bad. That's peanuts. Hey, I run into a couple of foreign lugs, and they will pay you almost anything you want to ask for stuff like that report on the tank armor that you've been carrying around. That little briefcase is worth 50,000 rocks. Where is it? I don't know. The dame I had with me threw it out of the car. Where? I didn't pay any attention. The dame must know where it is. Well, where is she now? I parked it with Joe McGotty. We'll go pick her up. I need a few grand to rattle around in my pocket until I cool off. About here, I think, Slip. What do you say, cute eyes? This is Ned. That's all I wanted to know. All right, you can stop here, Slip. Now, you'll save us a lot of time if you'll tell us where you threw it. I'm not talking. I'll kick it out of her, boss. Do you really think I'd help you get a hold of military information? How do you know what's in that briefcase? It's pretty obvious. He escapes from an army camp by stealing an army car. There's a briefcase in it that doesn't belong to him. He doesn't even care when I throw it out. And now, suddenly, it's very valuable. Oh, this dame is too smart to live. Never mind, Slip. We'll find it ourselves. You walk along the road and we'll take this field. Go on, cute eyes. Walk in front of me. Hey, Slip! I've got it! Coming! Coming! Hey, that's good work, boss. Let's see it. Right here. Thanks, thanks. Well, this is a kiss off Lucky Reach. Hand it over. Okay. It's 12 o'clock, Cinderella, and I'm going to turn you into a squash. And am I going to love it? I've been laying for you for a long time. You know, Slip, I had a hunch you were beginning to like that big chair of mine. From now on, it's my big chair. You're all true, Lucky. You ain't a big shot anymore. You're just a washed-up little drip. I thought you were getting too big for your pants. I was going to have you hammered down, but I got busy with that army stuff and let it slide. Bad business letting things pile up on your desk like that. Yeah, <laughs> it just proves that you're getting old-fashioned. <laughs> Why, you're so out of date that you ought to be retired. I'm going to do you one favor, though, just for old times' sake. Where do you want it, in the front or in the back? You're getting ahead of yourself, Slip. That briefcase is empty. What are you giving me? Open it up. Take a look. Okay. But don't you make a move. Oh, of course not. Slip, you've dropped a paper. Where? Thanks, cute eye. <laughs> now I'm top, man. I'm going to kick your brains in, you little living rat. Oh, I didn't mean it, Lucky. I didn't mean it. Don't, Lucky. I fed you when you were starving. Don't you... Stop it, Lucky, stop it. Why should I? No one deserves it more than him. It's murder, Lucky. Now stop it, I tell you. Spider him murder is self defense. Oh, please, please. Let go of me. No, no. Look, if I let him go now, he wakes up with an awful headache. And later on, I get it in the back. If I give him a few more kicks, he misses all that headache, and I don't get it in the back. Lucky, you can't do it. Okay. Okay. Now take the briefcase. What are you planning on doing with it? What do you think? Well, I think a lot of things, but I was hoping you were going to return it. It's a pretty long ride back to that camp. But don't you see, if you... If you take it back now, they'll never press the desertion charge, and I'll say there was nothing to the kidnapping. You'll be square with everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be square behind the eight ball and right back in the army. But at a time like this, you can't sell your country short. I'm not selling anything short. I wouldn't take a cent less than a hundred grand for these papers. How low can you get? Come on, cute eyes. Let's get in the car. It's time I put you up for the night. Where are we going? Back to the same service station. Please don't, Lucky. I couldn't stand it. With you being so nosy and patriotic, there's nothing else I can do. I'll be good. I I won't try to run away. Uh Uh-uh, I can't take that chance. Come on. Well, at least let me have a cigarette first. Okay. Here you are. And a match. Check. Thanks. How can you do this? What? 
Tell that information to the other side. Why not? You know, you're absolutely immoral. You haven't faith in anybody or anything. I shouldn't think it'd be worth it. You must feel awfully miserable and alone. Me? I'm never alone. I spend every night of my life in a nightclub with a show going on. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Sure I do. You're trying to talk me out of selling the briefcase. You bet I am. You think this war hasn't anything to do with you, but it has. The whole world's involved and everybody in it, and if we lose, we'll end up Lord knows where. And that includes you, whether you like it or not. No. No, it don't. If things change, a smart guy figures out a new angle. It's the clucks who go around getting their heads knocked off that are pigeons. You never had a thought in your whole life where you didn't figure the angles first, did you? I mean, what it meant to you and what you thought you could get out of it. Anybody who don't is a sucker. Very well. Then let's take it step by step. Let's find out what the angles are for you in this thing. You're established in, well, whatever business you're in, you seem to like it and you make a lot of money at it. Doing okay. Well, to be completely realistic and selfish, you must want to keep things pretty much the way they are, don't you? Mm, yeah. Then you want the country you live in to win, don't you? Well, sure I do. Well, now we're getting someplace. All right, if you want the country you live in to win, why aren't you helping? Well, the way I see it, it's like a fight at the garden. Time on you might hands. want the guy in the purple the pants to win. You might even put a few bucks on him. Now our music resumes with another But you don't want him to win bad enough Sweet that you climb up in that ring and get your face bashed in helping him. Oh, I get Everything it. I You're impossible. Yours. I can't appeal to you on any basis, animal, vegetable, or mineral, or human. Just a little ball of fire, aren't you? Come here. Oh, let me go. It's time I kissed you, baby. I... Oh. I don't get you. I thought at least I'd have to spar a few rounds. What does it matter? It don't. It's just that some dames are hard to convince. I... I guess I had you figured out all wrong. I, I thought you were a regular ice cube till I kissed you. Even an ice cube has to be defrosted once in a while. I'll take a rain check, baby. Come on. We'll lock you up in the stable for the night. The Sherry Waldorf, that is. Our drama will continue in just a moment. But first, here is a word from RCA Victor. It's a great life this week for television enthusiasts. Yes, the current issue of Life magazine, dated February 12th, contains a really thrilling double-page advertisement showing RCA Victor's complete new 1951 series of million-proof television. America's favorite television. Owned most, proved most, and now more wonderful than ever. Fourteen brand new RCA Victor models, each more glamorous than the last. Table toppers, consoles, and console combinations. Cabinets ranging from an exquisite 18th century lowboy to a stunning modern swiveler. Fourteen, seventeen, and nineteen-inch screens. With such beautiful pictures, well, you'll simply have to see them to believe them. So run, don't walk, to the nearest RCA Victor dealers and meet all the glamorous new million-proof models in real life. Here's hoping you can take home your favorite set soon and start having the time of your life, enjoying the life of your time with matchless RCA Victor Television. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's All-Star Festival, brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you mildness, with no unpleasant aftertaste, the best cigarette for you to smoke, the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Lucky Jordan, starring Alan Ladd, will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification.
This is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue with the third act of Lucky Jordan, starring Alan Ladd in his original role of Lucky. Now, here is our host narrator, Screen Director King Veder. During the night, while Lucky was asleep in the car, Jill broke loose from her prison in the so-called Sherry Waldorf. Not able to do anything about it, Lucky headed for New York and arranged a rendezvous with Slip Moran in front of a place called Marty's on 42nd Street. And the price to deliver the briefcase was 100 grand. Can you spare a quarter, mister? Ah, uh, what's your hurry, cheapskate? Can you spare a quarter, Mr... Mr. Jordan? Come on, scram. Please, Mr. Jordan, I got something to tell you. Go on, blow. They're stacked out all around. Marty's waiting for you. Who's stacked out? Oh, a bunch of torpedoes. I saw them when I went by on my route. I thought I'd better tell you in case you wasn't expecting them. Slip around with them? If he is, he ain't advertising it. Thanks. Better be careful where you hide out, Mr. Jordan. I'll take care of that. But you're hollering a stove. Everybody's after you. Slip Moran, the FBI, the Army, and and some big shot who says you kidnapped his daughter. All right, go on, blow, will you? But I'm trying to tell you, you can hide out at my place if you want to. Nobody'd ever think of looking for you there. Where is your place? Over the Green Grotto on Fulton Street. Will there be any room there for me with those gin bottles? I don't think you can be too choosy. Okay, okay, let's have your key. Here. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Jordan. Here comes a customer. Maybe he'll give me a quarter for a cup of coffee. A quarter for a cup of coffee? You wouldn't want me to eat in the cheaper places. Hello. Slip? I'm not keeping my appointment today because I don't like double crosses. I'll give you one more chance. I'll meet you tomorrow at 11 o'clock in a toy store on Fifth Avenue. And there's no use framing me because I won't have the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get it when you've forked over 100 grand in cash. <laughs> yourself comfortable. On this sofa? <laughs> How's business? Oh, I never saw so many cheap skates in my life. I knocked off early. I hope you got something to eat in that bag. I got some stew on the stove here. All I got to do is warm it up. You like stew, Mr. Jordan? I'd rather have guinea hen in the glass. But if that's all you got, I won't turn it down. Oh, I like the stew. Oh, I cruised past Marty's after you left and hit one of them torpedoes for a quarter. They was waiting for you, all right. He gave me four bits to keep moving. Uh, Annie, I haven't got any cash, but I'm working on a deal right now. And, well, if I put it across, I'll slip you a couple of C's. You don't need to. What are you giving me? Think you can get more out of slip? If that's the way you feel about it, you can get out of here. I don't get it. I didn't tell you to come here so as I could put the bite on you. No? Doing me a favor free of charge? Not exactly. Oh, it's kind of hard to explain. Something happened that day I went to the camp to shake you down. Everybody was so nice to me when they found out I had a boy in the army. So you're on the level. That's right. Then when I saw you today, it hit me like a ton of bricks that you was walking into a trap. So I did just what any mother would do. Felt good to know you needed me, and I could do something for you. Well, don't get so tied up in that mother act that you start telling people I'm back home again. Say, they couldn't get anything out of me with a crowbar. Hey, uh, where can I hide this briefcase? Under the mattress. I'll show you. That's the first place anybody would look. I got the place. Follow me. Here's a wall with busted plaster. There's a hole big enough to fit your briefcase in. Mm. It'll do. Cover it up. Sure. Oh, ain't that a pretty Mexican shawl I used to hide the hole? I got it at one of them big department stores on Fifth Avenue. 
dropped into my umbrella one rainy day. Yeah? Where'd you get the umbrella? Oh, I accidentally walked past it, and it hooked into my dress. Why didn't you walk past a couple of stakes tonight? Oh, that reminds me. The stew must be all warm. Sit down here at the table. Okay, but I know I'm going to regret it. When it comes right down to it, there's nothing like good home cooking. Especially if you can't get out to a restaurant. Here's your plate of stew. Come on, taste it. Okay. Is it all right? Got enough pepper? Enough salt? Got enough salt and pepper, but it's shy on meat. Oh, well, ain't I the stoop? I'll give it all to myself. Here, here's some of mine. Look, Annie, uh, tomorrow I gotta go out for a while. I want you to stay here and watch things. You think you ought to go out? Yeah, it's business. But with all that money you got, Mr. Jordan, you shouldn't go around risking your neck for a few more dollars. Yeah, with all the money I got, I don't dare show my face in the bank. That's why I gotta put this deal through. Want some more stew? Mm, same as this? Sure. No, thanks. I'm sorry that you don't like my food and you don't like me. What are you talking about? I love you. I brought your Mother's Day present. You did. I said I did here. Jim, that's the sweetest thing a kid ever gave his mother. Well, now, don't get yourself stiff. Thanks, Mr. Jordan. Come on, blow. I want to get some rest. Good night, son. Good night, Ma. Now remember, Mr. Moran, we don't care how you get the briefcase, just so long as we have it soon. Oh, take it easy, Kisselman. I made a deal with you to deliver it, and you'll have it. Just have the dough ready, that's all. But your methods are so slow. Wait. Slow, he says. Look, bud, whether you know it or not, I already know where Lucky Jordan is staking out, and everything is under control. Now blow, will you? Here comes Lucky. I shall be waiting for you at his usual place, Kilpatrick Gardens. All right, Slip, let's go into cases. I'm in a hurry. Hey, I like this toy store. How'd you happen to tell me to meet you here? Well, I figured if you asked any of your friends to drop in, they'd be kind of conspicuous. You bring the dough? You bring the thing? I told you I wouldn't have it with me. Kind of a one-sided deal, ain't it? Now, look. We went through all that on the phone. Give me the dough and you get the stuff before midnight tonight. Well, I don't know, Lucky. I talked to them foreign lugs till I was black in the face and they just won't pay any hundred grand. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, they just won't get it. Nope, Lucky, they they won't pay a cent more than uh, 75 Gs. All right, give me the 75. Hey, wait a minute, will you? I got to talk to him again. Well, how'd I know you was going to take it? What is this, a stall? Trying to double talk me until somebody gets here with a Tommy gun? Are you nuts? Nutty enough to have a torpedo with a gun in his pocket looking right at you. Yeah? Oh, Oh, no, Lucky, no. Angelo, you're double. The kid from the bowling alley. Well, now, Dare is really a tough bowler. (laughs) You can say that again. He shoots strikes with a bullet. Yeah? Well, where do we go from here? Look, Gooseneck, I don't know what you're trying to frame, but I'm giving you one last chance. You meet me here at 5 o'clock this afternoon, be sure you have that 75 grand on you. Or I'll burn the stuff. Well, okay, Lucky. If I don't show, you'll know the deal fell through. You know, Slip, I got a feeling that you got a feeling the deal is going to fall through. Well, you know how it is with these foreign lugs. It ain't like you and me dealing. You can trust me. Yeah. With you, I'd know exactly what to expect. Hey, Mr. Jordan, better get out of here. What's the hurry, Angelo? Well, well, if you look behind you, there's an excited goyle pointing her finger at you. And there's a cop following the end of it. Well, how do you like that? It's Cute Eyes trying to slip me another Michael. So long, Cute Eyes. Mr. Jordan, I demur. What's this demur business, Angela? Well, I think I'd kind of be safer in a bowling alley than with you. Look, I'm cutting you in on a piece of the deal, ain't I? I'll give it back to you with a profit if you let me go bye-bye. Just keep your lips shut and do as I say and you'll remain healthy. Here, this is Sandy's apartment. Here's the key. Open the door. Yeah, I... Mr. Jordan, the, the door's already open. Yeah. And somebody's taking the apartment apart. Annie! Annie, you here? Sorry. Get downstairs, Angelo. Keep your eyes peeled. Oh, okay, Mr. Jordan. Annie, 
Are you all right? Yes, I'm... I'm all right. Well, what happened? Be careful. A couple of men come looking for that briefcase. Slapped me around something awful. But I didn't tell them where it was. They couldn't make me tell. I'll take care of Steph for this. I'll take care of those foreign lugs, too. Watch out. They're mean guys. That stuff they want so bad is going where it'll hurt them most. Right back to the army. Why don't you go back, too? If you set your mind to it, you could be a better soldier than any of them. I'll get you a doctor. Do you think you'll be all right for a while? Uh-huh. Get that briefcase out of here, though. Yeah. I'll do that later. Right now, you're far more important. Go and get it. And return it to the army. I'll be all right, son. Okay, Ma. Well, here it is. Watch out, Lucky. Oh, that'll take care of you for a while, Lucky boy. That briefcase is mine for free. Son, son. Shut up, you whimpering. You gotta rat or else I'll kick your teeth in. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Oh, it's you, Mr. Jordan. What happened to all the furniture in my office, Pearl? Where's Slip? I haven't any idea. This morning he just up and moved, and now I'm out of a job. Where'd he move to? I don't know. Come on, now you better tell me where Slip is. Honest, I don't know. They haven't let me in on anything lately. But I think maybe Slip's gone straight. Doc, give me that. Honest, Lucky, I I think he started a nursery or something. Well, I mean for flowers. Flowers are all he talks about. I guess there's a lot of money in it, too, because just this morning, he sold some tulips for $50,000. Oh, that's an expensive bouquet. What kind of tulips were they? I can't remember. Come on, heat that redhead up. This is important. It's all I got to go on. Well, it was Torch of something. Yeah, Torch of Holland. That's what it was. Torch of Holland tulips? Yeah. Oh, I know all about them. They're a very rare variety. There's only one place in the state where they can be found. If we find them, then what? Well, if Mr. Moran was doing business with Torch of Holland Tulips, he'd have to buy them from Kilpatrick Gardens. Okay, Angelo, let's get going. You gentlemen won't be able to go all through the gardens. It's almost closing time. Well, I just want to take a look at the tulips. Uh, take the path to the right. Have they got the names on them? Everything in the garden is clearly labeled. Well, thanks, John. This way, Angelo. Is there a telephone here, Gateman? Uh, not a public phone. Well, it's very important. A local call? No, I want to talk to the FBI in New York City. Well, this is a house phone. I'll have to get your line. Oh, thanks. Please hurry. Hello? This is Miller at the gate. There's a young lady here who wants the FBI. Would you please connect me? Thank you. Uh, there you are, miss. Oh, Thanks. Hello, hello. Is this the FBI? Uh, let me speak to Mr. Herndon, please. Oh, Mr. Herndon's not in, but my name's Bowman. May I help you? Yes, this is Jill Evans. I've followed Lucky Jordan out to the Kilpatrick Gardens on Long Island. If you hurry here, you'll catch him. Well, we'll get there as soon as we possibly can. But in the meantime, you'd better go direct to Mr. Kilpatrick and explain the situation to him. He'll help you hold Jordan until we arrive. Where is Mr. Kilpatrick's residence, please? The house to the right, above the bed marked Torch of Holland Tulips. Come in, Miss Evans. I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Kilpatrick, but Mr. Bowman of the FBI asked me to see you. Well, I know all about Lucky Jordan. I've already talked to Mr. Bowman. You needn't worry about his escaping. Well, he's very slippery. My gardeners can handle him. They're searching the grounds thoroughly at this very moment. They'll find him hiding somewhere. Well, he's not that easy to capture, I tell you. Please, please. The gate is shut and can't be opened because it is electrically controlled. But what's to prevent him from climbing the wall around the garden? My dear, if he ever gets to the top, he'll find wires that carry a pretty stiff current. Now, don't you worry. We'll catch your fugitive, all right. I'll be with you in a few moments, Miss Evans. I want to check the grounds myself. Thank you, Mr. Kilpatrick. Not at all. Here we are by the bed labeled Torch of Holland. Now what, Angelo? Search me, Mr. Jordan. Angelo, you're a genius. Yeah? You stirred me right. You know what you were talking about. I did? 
Right on the nose. There's Slip Moran going to the greenhouse with a smooth-looking gent, and he's carrying the briefcase. Come on. <gasps> Wouldn't you be better off if you went alone? Come on. Here we are. Ain't you going to be afraid going in there all by yourself? Remember, Mr. Moran packs a gap. I'm not going in by the way of the door. We're going overland. We? Yeah. We're going up to the top of the greenhouse to see what's cooking through the open vent. I'd rather be cooking with bowling balls. Come on. Get going. <clears throat> Moran, these drawings on the table. One tank looks Slippery. like another to me. I'll have my engineer check them tonight. He says they're all right. I can fit through this vent, Angelo. I'm going to drop in and pay them a visit. Mr. Jordan, I'm sorry, but I ain't no stunt pilot. Keep coming. Okay. Leaving for the West Coast tomorrow. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Just as I leap into the greenhouse, you turn on that sprinkling system, Angelo. You're looking for a watery grave? Shut up and do as I say. Hit it, Angelo. Did you have a bathing suit slip? Stop him, man. He has to climb to the big thing. Drop the house. Try shooting with your gun in your pocket. The door's locked. He can't get out. There's another exit right through the glass. What's no, Mr. Jordan? Jump, you numbskull. Jump. <laughs> Well, this is a fine fix. We've got the plans, but there's nothing we can do with them. We can't get through the gate. The wall's wide with enough juice to satisfy the warden at Sing Sing. Come on, Angelo. I'll give you a lift. I'll give the wall another try. We'll give the wall another try. Mr. Jordan, I'm too young to commit suicide. Duck, Angelo, here they come. They're headed for the gate. Someone's there. You're talking too loud. Shut up. A man asking for supper, his umbrella or something. Got a pencil, Angelo? Yeah, yeah. What, what do you want it for? I've got an idea how to get the FBI here in a hurry. We'll write him a note. Uh, and then what? We'll stick it in the umbrella that's on the bench and include the plans. Come on. Start writing. Hurry up. Mr. Jordan, you, you got a brain. Just keep writing. Tell him where we're at. Mr. Jordan, you haven't got a brain. What's that? Supposing the gent who receives the umbrella don't open it up for a week. Supposing it don't rain for a month. I'll take care of that. Just give me the water hose. I'll follow him alongside the wall, and he'll think he ran into the Niagara Falls. We're trapped, Angelo. They've got a spot in I'm going to this house. You go around the back. Lucky! Welcome, Mr. John. Kindly put your hands up. Get over there. What are you doing with this spy, cute eyes? I'm sorry you were put to all this trouble, Mr. Kilpatrick. Not at all, not at all. I'm glad to help. May I use your telephone? I want to call my father and tell him where I am. I'm afraid not. What? Well, you see, you know so much about my business interests that... Well, I can't let you go. But I talked to the FBI. They told me to see you. You talked to me on the house phone, never the FBI. Too bad, cute eyes. Sit down, Miss Evans. Lucky. What's cooking, Slip? <laughs> You'll find out. Meet a friend of mine, Mr. Kesselman. So this is notorious Mr. Jordan. Mr. Moran, I don't consider the plans delivered. You'll have to get them if you want your 50000 Well, don't you worry. I'll get them. Hand them over, Lucky. If you can find them on me, you're a better man than I am, hey. Dunkadim. Uh, don't hand me that, wise guy. You better talk while you still got teeth to talk through. Leave it to me, Slip. You want him to remember what he did with the plans, don't you? Well, there are better ways. In my country, we work it this way. We'll sharpen the end of a match, then drive it under a fingernail and light it. Uh, 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 stop it! So soon? I'll tell you where it is. You have no stamina at all, have you? Where is it, Lucky? I... I threw it under the bridge. It goes over the pond. I'll get it. I'll go along with you, Moran. You keep your eyes on him, Kesselman. More than my eyes, Mr. Kilpatrick. This is God. You know, this is revelation. I'm aware that my countrymen are often referred to as gangsters by our opponents, and it's always amused me. I've read about American gangsters, and it seemed to me that their viewpoints and ours were quite similar. I was told when they wanted something, they took it. So do we. When somebody stood in our way, he was eliminated. We understand that technique thoroughly. 
So, you can imagine my shock, Mr. Jordan, when I finally meet a gangster like you, a prominent gangster, and discover you're spineless. No, I am no longer amused by the comparison. Don't try to put me in your class, lunkhead. I've knocked around a little, but alongside of you, I'm a Sunday school teacher. You're an uncouth jackal, that's what you are. Hey, bulbhead. Better look behind you. There's someone sneaking up on you. Fool, you believe I will be tricked by your American stupidity? Okay, Buster, have it your own way. Angelo, no one knows better where the ten pen should be. Get there. Stop your foolish chatter. Now, Angelo, hit the number one pen with that round flower pot. Okay. What is it? A strike, Kesselman. I quit, Mr. Jordan. Okay, Angelo. You can go back to your bowling alley. Get your hands up, Kesselman. Mr. Jordan, I don't ever want to see another bowling ball. What's going on? Easy, Kilpatrick, and drop that gun slip. We seem to have reached an impasse, Jordan. You can't very well get out of this estate without my setting off the alarm and catching you. And as long as you hold that gun, I can't get very far either, can I? I should say about a step and a half. Oh? Exactly. I suggest we make a deal. Originally, you wanted 100000 for that report, didn't you? Well, now I'm prepared to pay it. This is the payoff, all right. But not the way you mean it. You boys are going to get paid off in slugs. Now, look, I don't blame you for being sore, Lucky, but this is nothing that you can settle with a heater. Well, the guy offered you a hundred grand, didn't he? Ain't that what you want? I got a customer I like better. I'm selling it to the Army on the installment plan. They're going to pay me 50 bucks a month for it. Yes, but aren't you a little confused, Jordan? Why, a man of your stamp can't get anything out of being a tin horn hero. Why should you give up a hundred thousand dollars... For the sake of a country that considers you an enemy to society. Maybe it's because I don't want to see that country run by a bunch of guys who go around beating up old women. Till I ran up against you, your kind of rat was just words in the newspaper to me. Now it's another way to spell cockroach. Well, this place needs cleaning up. And for the next two minutes, I'm a one-man board of health. Now look, Lucky, after all, you and me, we're pals. That's why I'm giving it to you first. Hey, Lucky! Lucky, it's Mr. Herndon from the FBI. Well, Jordan, it was nice of you to be here, too, so we could get all of you at once. Wait a minute. What do you think sent that report out of here in that man's umbrella? Oh, you'll have to think of a better one than that. Oh, but Mr. Herndon, he had all these men rounded up when you came in. Well, you'd better come along with us anyway, Jordan. Uh, this always happens. You try to help a guy and the referee hits you over the head with a stool. All right, men. Let's take this menagerie downtown and lock it up in the cage. You haven't anything to worry about. They'd never consider you a deserter after what you've done. Well, you'll probably even get a citation. Oh, what's that? You know, a medal. I can hear the colonel sing. Come on, Jordan, start digging. Okay, Sarge. Why do you think you're throwing that dirt? I just had my shoes shine. Sorry, I thought it was your face. Hi, cute eyes. Hey, where do you think you're going? I just wanted to say goodbye to my sister. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, Lucky, why did you do it? Just when everybody was calling you a hero, then you beat up a sergeant. Well, he started by blowing that whistle and waking me up. Well, I guess that ends your going to the party at the canteen. That's where you're wrong, sir. I, uh, think this sergeant can be had. Don't you dare try anything like that. Your education's going to start right now. And if you do anything to get out of the guardhouse before you should, I'm going to put you down as hopeless. Put me down for Saturday night, cute eyes. <laughs> I'll get out somehow. Bye, Lucky. Bye, cute eyes. Hey, uh, your sister's a good looker. How about meeting her? Well, maybe we can work out a deal. Now, all you have to do is let me out of the clink tonight, you see? Eh, yeah, she isn't that good looking. Start moving that shovel. Okay, Sarge. There's dirt in your eye. Why, you! I'm sorry, General. And 
so ends our play for tonight, Lucky Jordan. Our star, Alan Ladd, will return in just a moment with screen director King Veter. Next Thursday, the Screen Director's Playhouse presents an adaptation of another great drama. Our play is Dark Victory, and our stars will be Tallulah Bankhead and David Bryan, with Screen Director Edmund Goulding. Now, here again is tonight's star, Alan Ladd. Thank you. To Mr. Frank Tuttle, the director of Lucky Jordan, who at present is in Paris, France, I would like to extend my sincerest gratitude. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce the distinguished director, Mr. King Vidor, the creator of The Crowd and The Big Parade, two immortal motion pictures which are listed among the ten all-time, all-time greats. Thank you, Alan. And for the Screen Director's Playhouse, let me say, it is always a pleasure to have you on our show. I read something very heartwarming about you and your wife, Sue, the other day, how you both visit our army hospitals and entertain our boys. Well, to the contrary, King. Sue and I derive more pleasure and entertainment from the boys than we could ever possibly give. Without a doubt, you have to swell with pride just, just being around them. Their courage and good old American spunk is something to shout from the rooftops about. Give them a break, America. A visit from loved ones and even casual acquaintances is the greatest tonic for them. Please, please don't forget to find the time to visit them. Good night. Good night, Alan. And come back soon. This is King Vidor saying good night for the Screen Director's Playhouse. Lucky Jordan was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is the Hal Wallace production, September Affair, starring Joan Fontaine and Joseph Cotton. Alan Ladd is currently being seen in Paramount's Technicolor production, Branded. King Veter has just completed Lightning Strikes Twice for Warner Brothers. Included in tonight's cast were Sheldon Leonard as Slip, Gigi Pearson as Pearl, Herb Vigran as Angelo, Earl Ross as Kilpatrick, Virginia Gregg as Jill, Frank Nelson as the sergeant, Paul Duboff as Kesselman, and Verna Felton as Annie. Lucky Jordan was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's program were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen next Thursday when we present Dark Victory, starring Tallulah Bankhead and David Bryan, with screen director Edmund Goulding. Listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night feature of the all-star festival. Tonight in many cities, mothers will be out ringing doorbells to remind their neighbors of the March of Dimes. Those who are contacted will welcome this reminder to contribute to this worthy cause. For you who live where no such efforts will be made, we offer this suggestion. Give and give generously to the March of Dimes. Tomorrow, Duffy's Tavern on NBC.